Her eyes. They were often upon him. Candid, admiring, possessive. Her eyes, her extraordinary eyes. Alan Patterson was aware of her eyes. At the newsstand, at the lunch counter, in the elevator. He was aware of them for almost a month. And they were to lead him into guilt and terror and murder, as sure as my name is Boris Carlo. Our story is about the watcher and the watched, and a not so innocent bystander. There's an outsider, too, Alan's wife. Four pairs of anxious eyes, but no one could foresee the shattering effect of the twisted image. That's the name of our story. Our principal players are. Mr. Leslie Nielsen, Mr. George Grizzard, Miss Natalie Trundy, and Miss Diane Foster. Well, I'll say no more, but I promise you one thing. This is a thriller. <laughs> This is not your entrance. You're to use the staff door down the hall, the same as everyone else. I always forget. I'm sorry. Apparently, you also forget you're due in at 9 o'clock, not 9.20. You may think you're an executive, Merle. You're not. I'm sorry. There was a tie-up on the subway this morning. Well, no one can say you don't have a variety of excuses. Mr. Burkett will be in at 9.30, Mr. Nicholson at 10, and you have a board meeting at 11. Cross talk, Mr. Alan? Uh, hello, Marge. What's the matter? I just had a run-in with one of the boys in the mail room, Merle Jenkins. Oh, what's the trouble? He is never on time. And ever since he's been here, little things have been missing. What sort of things? Stamps, for instance. Pens, small change. Any proof? No, nothing concrete. Well, I don't like to fire anyone just on suspicion. Why don't we give him another week or so and see what happens? Huh? Here's Stamps. What's he look like? Oh, Alan, for heaven's sake, he's in and out of your office four times a day with the mail. Young, with blonde hair. Kind of a smudged up carbon copy of you. As a matter of fact, he acts as though he thought he were you. Well, I guess I hadn't noticed. Yes? Mr. Purdy's on three. Right, thank you. Uh, Marge, we'll talk about this after yes, lunch. Sure. I have a very full morning. Of course. Hello, Bill. How are you? Fine. How about lunch one day next? I'm sorry, Bill. I've given up your kind of lunches. I'm on a diet. Who are you kidding? No, I mean it. I've been eating in the uh, drugstore in the building here for the past week. May I share your table? mind telling me something? Why do you stare at me all the time? I don't mind at all. I just like to look at you. I think you're the most attractive man I've ever seen. <laughs> well, oddly enough, my wife feels the same way. So does my small daughter. Of course they do, because it's true. Well, you don't mean that... Well, they couldn't mind my just looking at you. Well, perhaps they wouldn't. Mr. Patterson. Well, how do you know my name? Well, I asked one of the elevator operators. Mine's Lily Hansen. How do you do, Miss Hansen? Uh, you uh, work in the building, don't you? Yes, I do. I like it very much. It's my first job. 
Well, that must be exciting. Oh, it is, and it's such a nice job. We only work from 9 to 5, and we have every Saturday off. I wish I could say the same. You have to work on Saturday? Well, just this Saturday. Nice meeting you, Miss Hanson. Goodbye. It's not goodbye. Alan. <laughs> I'll wait to hear from you before making any decision, cordially yours, etc. You want this one to go airmail special, too? Yes. Uh, look, it's after 12. Why don't you type that stuff up and I'll go for lunch? It won't be long, and then you can go when I get back. Well, I brought a sandwich with me. So many places are closed on Saturday. Yes, well, I'll find some place. You don't have to rush. I have enough work to keep me busy for a couple of hours. Oh, I have enough trouble staying on this diet without all that extra time. <laughs> Come and keep you company for lunch. You thought you'd... Uh, Mr. Patterson, I just remembered... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, Miss Redley. Uh, I was just going to say that Pierre's is open on Saturday. Uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, yes, Pierre's sounds lovely. Such a wonderful lunch. I've never been in a restaurant like this before in my whole life. Oh, haven't you? It must be wonderful to be able to eat in places like this all the time. Well, someday you'll be able to. Sometime you'll marry a nice young man. Oh, no, I won't. Marry a young man, I mean. You can't depend on them. Well, then, let's say you marry someone. Yes, because I have a plan. I do everything by plan. I read an article once that said it's the only way to make things come out the way you want them to. You're a very dedicated young lady, Lily. Where are you from? You're not a New Yorker, are you? I'm from Elmira. Oh, it was awful. I saved for two years to get to New York. Aren't you lonely without your family? Yes, but it doesn't bother me, because I know it's just for now until my plan works out. Well, that must be quite a plan. I have to get back to the office. I have work to finish. Oh, Alan, not yet. It's so nice just to sit here with you. Alan. Why, Bill, how are you? Fine, fine, but I thought you'd given up lunches like this. Well, you know, uh, Saturday. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Purdy, Miss Hanson. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Would you care to join us, uh, Bill? Oh, no, thanks. I've had lunch. Well, darling, can't Mr. Purdy at least sit and have a drink with us? I do so want to meet all of your friends. Well, I've got to catch a train. Uh, so long, Alan. Been nice to have met you, Miss Hanson. Darling, please don't be angry with me. Lily, this is not a scene from a movie or some love story magazine. I can't stand it when you talk to me that way. Good Lord, don't cry. It's my fault for bringing you here in the first place. Get up. I'll call a cab. Alan, will I see you on Monday? No, I'll be very busy on Monday. And every day. got a visitor in your room. A woman. What? I saw the landlady let her in. She said she was your sister. My sister? Well, that's what she said. Hello, Mel. Surprised to see me. Well, what are you doing here? I came to New York on business. Well, how'd you find out where I live? I called your office. Naturally, I couldn't leave without seeing my own brother. Besides, everyone was so impressed with your letters about how successful you are. I was curious to see for myself. Well, I haven't always lived here. This is just a t temporary setback. What a liar you are, Mill. And you always were. Better close the door. We don't want the neighbors in on our family discussion. I suppose you're going to tell them now, all of them. Now, why would I do anything like that? Because you hate me. You always have. You made that up because I disciplined you. 
Someone had to try at least to save you from being completely spoiled by Mother. She didn't spoil me. She tried to help me make something of myself. Make you what? Speech lessons, dramatic lessons, buying you more clothes than you knew what to do with. Anybody think you were a girl the way she treated you? Is that why you always punished me when she wasn't around? You wanted them for yourself? I had better things to do with myself even then. I failed pretty badly with you, but I did try. You didn't fail. You succeeded in making me so afraid of... of so many things I shouldn't be afraid of. You said I'd never do anything, I'd never get anywhere. It took me years to get over you. But now you have, hmm? Yes, now I have. You're vice president of your firm, aren't you? Or so you said in your letter. I never said I was vice president. Liar. I said I was going to be vice president, and I am going to be. You can't steal jobs the way you steal things, brother dear. You still do steal, don't you, Merle? Shut up. You're still afraid of me. A full grown man and still afraid of his sister. You get out. With pleasure. You know, it's a pity that you look the way you do. Such a pretty boy. Will never become a man because it's all on the outside. What a waste. Get out, Louise. Any messages for the folks back home? No? Well, then, I'll just fill them in on your activities. In the mail room. Bye. came for you just before you got home. Miss Hanson. Hanson? Mm-hmm. You don't look very pleased. No. Uh, well, it's all pretty silly, but I suppose I should tell you about it. If you like. Actually, it's very little to tell. She's a crazy kid, works down in our building. She's not in your office. No, but she eats at the same drugstore. And Yesterday, she sat down at my table, so I talked to her. There must be more to it than that, or you wouldn't be so embarrassed. Yes, well, there is a little more. Today, she showed up. The drugstore was closed, so, uh, well, I took her to Pierre's. Now, don't ask me why, because I don't know. It just seemed like the simplest thing to do at the time. And now you're scared to death. No, it's just a little annoying, that's all. And a little bit flattering. However... I think you'd better make the situation quite clear to her on Monday before you get in over your head. Yes, I suppose I have to. Better hurry or we'll be late. Right. You think because somebody's young, they're not lonely. Well, Lily, if you're lonely, I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do about that. I'm a married man who loves his wife and family very much. Now, you're coming to the office and calling my home. It's very embarrassing. It's got to stop. You mean we'll never see each other again? Well, of course we'll see one another. Work in the same building, bound to run into one another occasionally. Oh, Alan, isn't there some way? No. I'll finish your lunch. I only have one thing to say, and then I'll leave. I love you. I always will.
What is it, Norman? It's telegram, Mr. Patterson. Yes. Miss Hanson is on one. I don't want to talk to her. Get rid of her. Now come in here for a minute, will you? Alan. I wish you'd stop that. It's very annoying. Oh. I'm sorry. A little nervous tonight. We both are. I'm not at all nervous. Well, something's the matter. You have been trying to pick a quarrel with me all evening. Alan, you did explain to your little friend, didn't you? Yes. Has something happened today you haven't told me about? Mommy? Darling, what are you doing up? I woke up and I got lonesome and I need someone. Oh, cry of the world. Come on, darling. I'll take you back to bed and stay until you fall asleep. You promise? I promise. You say goodnight to your father. Good night, Daddy. Good night, sweetie. on an extra job waiting tables or something? That's not funny. Well, I just wanted to know what you're all dressed up like that for. I'm all dressed up like this, as you put it, so I can go somewhere I can breathe. Somewhere I belong. Answer it, you wouldn't want to keep Miss Hanson waiting. Hello? Alan, don't hang up on me. I must see you tonight. I don't live very far away. It's 539 East 59th Street. I'm calling from outside, but I'm I going have no right intention of seeing come. you tonight or any other night. Miss Hanson, isn't it? Who are you? I'm Merle. We work in the same building, remember? Oh, yes, I, I guess I've seen you in the elevator. But how do you know my name? Well, Alan, Mr. Patterson, that is, has mentioned you several times. Alan? Are you a friend of Alan's? Yes, we work for the same firm. Oh, I've got to talk to you. Oh, it'd be a pleasure. You've been crying. What's the matter? That's what I'd like to talk to you about. All right. Why don't I go and get a bottle of wine? No, champagne. You can't drink champagne and cry. Now, they just don't go together. I don't want any. Why don't I go and get it and bring it up to your apartment? My plans have fallen through for the evening. I've got plenty of time. You can tell me all your troubles. You've been drinking already, haven't you? Why, just a few martinis before dinner. Now, now you run along, and I'll get the champagne, and I'll be right with you. We can talk about Alan. It's 5.39, just down the block. Fine, I won't be a minute.
Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like a bottle of champagne, please. All right, sir. Imported or domestic? Well, how do they run? Well, the imported to run you eight and a half up, the domestic uh, four bucks. Oh. Well, come to think of it, it's foolish to get champagne. The girl I'm taking it to has got no palate at all. Just run your buck and a half. Well, I wish you'd say something. She's still telephoning, so obviously you didn't make your position very clear today. Judy, I have told you there's no such thing as making anything clear to this yes, girl. Yes, you told me. But one lunch, even two, doesn't give any woman a claim to a man if that's all there is to it. Yes, well, I thought we'd get to that. How could we not? If I give you my solemn word that what I told you is the absolute truth, will you believe me? Well, then I want to. You don't know how desperately I want to. But you can't. Well, you did last night. So something has happened today to change your mind. Something besides those telephone calls. Alan, I... I have been thinking about it all day. Asking myself, what would happen if it were true? If you were having an affair with her, how much would I care? Well, did you come up with any answers, or are you still trying to make up your mind? The answer is, I would care very much. I know now I couldn't bear it. If you have been thinking about this all day, then something has happened. Now, what is it? I think you're lying to me. Mostly for music, the Willie Ockram Show. Continuing with a new item, pretty and polite. You name it. Here we are. Especially imported from France for your pleasure, madame. They didn't have any champagne iced, and you can't drink it warm, so I brought burgundy instead. It doesn't really matter. I didn't want any. Oh, nonsense. A little glass of wine is going to cheer you right up. Now, where are the glasses? Over there in the kitchen. Uh, well, they're not wine glasses, but it uh, doesn't matter. Where's the corkscrew? You don't need one. With this kind, you just turn the top. Oh. Skull. It's bitter. Well, you're just not used to it, that's all. You're pretty. You're very pretty, did you know that? Not tonight, I look terrible. No, you've just been crying, that's all. Now, look, why don't you tell me all about it? What's the problem? Did you and Alan have a little misunderstanding? Yes, but that's all it was. If I could only talk to him, I know we could straighten it out. Yeah, I'm sure you could. You're his girlfriend, aren't you? Yes, I am. Patterson, I think there are some things about Alan and me you ought to know. Would you write me and let me know when I can come and see you? Sincerely yours, Miss Lily Hansen. You have to plan things the way I did. I even picked out the building where I wanted to work. I did that first and then I got a job there. I wanted a building where a lot of old established firms had their offices. And then I just waited. I watched the men who worked there. And one day I saw Alan. And I knew right away he was the one I'd been looking for. How'd you get to know him? I just kept staring at him until he spoke to me. I knew he would. Just as I know he didn't mean it when he said he'll never see me anymore. Once he leaves his wife, he'll... Oh, come on. He's not going to leave his wife. I can't help it that she called. The number's in the book. Anybody who can read can look it up. I thought you'd given it to her. I don't know what to say to you. What you have to say is not to me. It's to Miss Hanson. And I suggest that you say it as soon as possible and say it so that she finally knows you mean it. And what would you have me say to her that I haven't already said? That she is not to call here again under any circumstances. This is my house and I won't stand for it. You can find some other way to keep in contact with her. Judy, I have had just about enough. 
I quite agree with you. I don't find this discussion about your squalid little affair very interesting. As a matter of fact, I find it and you disgusting. Alan! Oh, Alan, no! Alan, I... <laughs> She's a lady, a real lady. Just the same, he's going to leave her. I wrote her a letter and I'm going to see her to explain how much we love one another. And when she knows that, she'll let him go. And he'll come to see me. He won't have any other place to go. You're dreaming. I just don't talk about Alan anymore. He's not here. I am. I'm in love with Alan. Well, then you could be in love with me. I'm just as good looking as he is. I got twice as much brains, and one day I'm gonna have his job. I'll bet. Look at me, Lily. Who do I look like? Who do I remind you of? Don't you see how much I look like Alan Patterson? Like Alan? Well, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> You don't look like anybody. Don't say that. <laughs> and you're drunk, and if you don't get out of here, I'm going to call the police! You sit there and you listen to me. It's very late. I have to get up at 7 in the morning. It's not late. It's just a few minutes after 10, see? I know, but I'm very tired. I, I think that you Look should... at the watch! You see those buttons there on the side? You push those and it turns into a stopwatch. I bet you never saw a watch like that before. It's very nice. Alan's got one, too. Well, this is not Alan's. It's mine. I've had it for a long time. My mother gave it to me when I was 21. So don't go saying it belongs to Alan Patterson. But I didn't. Why should I say a thing like that? Please go home now. I have to go to work in the morning. Not if you don't want to. Alan's got plenty of money. You ought to get you a real nice apartment somewhere and give you money so you wouldn't have to work. That's what I'd do if I was him. If I was him, I'd have a wonderful apartment on the river. And a wife like her. A real lady. And I'd be where I belong. Where are you going? Don't touch me, please. I'm not gonna hurt you. If you come any closer, I'll scream. I swear I will! You don't scream when Alan touches you. Why should you scream now? <gasps> don't! Don't! Nobody's gonna hurt you! <gasps> just like Louise. You're just like her. She was always hurting me, too. Like she was deaf or something. I guess you might as well just climb up and knock. Yes, I guess I'd better. Thank you. Miss Hanson? Me, Alan. Miss Hanson? Encore for Oliver. It's our peak of the week. Runaway Rip.
You're not so high and mighty now, are you? You and your big job. And your apartment and your wife. And that big gunboat of a car. Things have changed, haven't they? You don't look so grand now. Not any better than she does. Miss Hanson. Miss Hanson, are you all right? Miss Hanson, are you all right? Oh. Take it easy. I'm coming. I'm. Oh, another bottle? I'd like a bottle of your best champagne, please. That's 15 bucks. That's quite all right. Just as you say. That'll be 15.45, please. Keep the change. I told you I'm playing poker and I'm playing Hello, poker. Hello, Marge. Thank God I got you at home. Listen, do you by any chance know where this Merle Jenkins is? You're dealing Jenkins me lives? a hand right now. Well, where downtown? Yes, I was afraid you wouldn't know exactly. Now lay off. It's that far down. I'll have to get the car. You know I wouldn't kid you. Yes, yes, there's trouble. Got to find him. I just I'll got have to go to the office the to get his address. No, 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 Marge. Listen, I can't explain now. Just stand by. Well, I may need you. So long. I'll talk to you later.
Ana. for a big night. Has he been back since? I ain't heard anybody come in in the last hour or so. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll wait outside for him. You can do anything you like so long as you do it quiet. He was a tall guy with blonde hair wearing one of them tuxedos. No, he wasn't wearing no tuxedo. He was tall, and he had blonde hair, and he had a little scar on his cheek like a bullet nicked him or something. But he was wearing a regular suit. What's the matter? Are you all right? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Did you know her? No, no. Uh, it's just such an awful thing, that's all. I'd like to have a bottle of champagne, please. Beer or nothing, buddy. That's all we sell. Well, if that's all you sell, there's not much I can do about it, is there? <laughs> not a thing. What kind of place is this? All they sell is beer. What do you want, champagne? As a matter of fact, yes. It's my favorite drink. Lucky you. <laughs> Yes, I suppose I have been lucky. I've gone pretty far for somebody my age. That's nice. Listen, why don't we get out of here and go somewhere we can get something fit to drink? Uh-uh, it's against the rules. I work here. That is, I'm a hostess. You're too beautiful to work in a place like this. You ought to have a lovely apartment uptown. Somebody to take care of you properly. Ah. Uh, who'd you have in mind? You? Why not? I can afford it. I'm vice president of my firm now. The man who used to be, a man named Merle Jenkins, got into some rather nasty trouble with the girl, and he lost his job, and I got it. You know what I think? I think you're a big phony. Don't say that. Why not? You bought me two beers. No privileges go with them, Buster. I can spot a phony a mile away, let alone sitting across the table from you little tramp. Ah! Bert! Bert! Come on! Come on! Hello? Judy. Oh, and where are you? I've been worried sick. No, I'm all right. There's nothing to worry about. I'll be home soon. Alan, I know all about it. I went there. Where? To that girl's apartment. The police were there, and, and the man described you. They think you killed her. There's nothing to forgive, dear. I know who did it. Merle Jenkins. He's a mail clerk at our office. I'm waiting for him now. Who 
Why can't you call the police? Judy, you don't understand. I can't go into details. Now, just take it easy. I'll call you back as soon as I can. anyone drive away in a dark gray car that was parked here? Yeah, a guy all dressed up. He looked a little like you, only a little shorter. He came out of there. It's the dance hall? Thanks, Duke. It's just me. You come home. Sue, come over here a minute, will you? What's the matter now? That kook you were with tonight snatched the car. This guy's looking for him. He wants to know his name. His name's Alan Patterson. You have a phone? Yeah, there's one right over there on the wall. Thank you. Don't be afraid, Judy. I'm not going to hurt you. I wouldn't hurt you for the world. I want you to sit down and listen. comes home, he expects... He has a right. To what? A right to what? Why do you say you've come home? Because... Because this is my home. Don't go away. I'm not going away. I, I just think that we should talk this over, and why don't you sit there, and I'll make you a drink. Yes, a drink. That's what I need. What would you like? Scotch? Anything you say, darling. Uh, I need some ice. I'll be right back.
Police are on the way. Let the child go. Merle. Merle, the only way out of here is the way you came in. Now, the police will have that blocked any minute. I won't stop you, Merle. Just leave the child and go. Merle. Yeah. 